Disney employees with some very telling comments. And, you know, I can't say that I'm surprised at all by what they had to say, by what people are saying internally. But I want to offer a different perspective about this and what I think this means for Christians going forward and how we should respond. I'm going to get into all of it here, guys, in less than 10 seconds. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Recently, a bunch of Disney employees were interviewed. Now, all the names were kept anonymous here, obviously, for protection, for their anonymity, and, you know, fear of retaliation. But these employees spoke out about the inner workings, about what's been going on with Disney in light of all of the media attention that they have been getting recently, especially, you know, with the most recent bill signed, the Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida, stripping them of their special privileges, which included them being tax exempt. And we know now they're going to have to start paying on that. Uh, everything about, you know, the Florida parental rights education bill, you know, that pre pre prevents the rainbow education you know, from kindergarten up to third grade. So all this has been going on. So these employees sat down and they let their their frustrations, they let their disappointment be known. And they said this, they said that we are, you know, we're a minority here within Disney. We love our job. We've loved working for the company up until recently. And they said some things in here that were, again, very telling and the top one that I took away from all of this was that Christians are no longer welcome at both the park itself and working for the company. This is according to one employee, one female employee who said this. No longer welcome. Now, this was all based off things that the employee had heard around the office and not like, I mean, they're not going to be asking you for proof that you're a Christian, nothing like that, so to speak. But what was said around the office in, in relation to Christians, how the company felt about them, and how much of a danger they are, what a threat they are to the agenda that Disney is trying to advance out there, was in fact very telling, with many of them saying that, it would be better if they just didn't even come to the park at all. They would rather not have the business. And this is why I always say that you can threaten to boycott and all of that, but they don't really care. At the end of the day, they're going to remain on their hill and they're going to die on that hill of wokeness no matter what. If it costs them, you know, the entire company or not, they will stay there. They're not going to apologize. They're not going to change their mind. They're not going to, you know, they're going to double down. That's exactly what they do because that's what the devil does. The devil doubles down on his evil. He doesn't come out. He's not going to apologize to you. He's not going to change his mind and all of a sudden start serving the Lord again. That's not what's going to happen here. And I say again because obviously we know that he used to be Lucifer. He used to be an angel. No longer the case. He's not going back to that ever again. So when it comes to both Families coming to the park and those who work for the company, conservatives as well. You know, they also talked about the fact here that they've even talked about some of their their employees or fellow co-workers saying that, well, certain disciplinary action should be taken against employees who don't tell the line, who won't get in line with the agenda. Oh, I didn't know that was... A requirement for working with Disney, having to go along with whatever agenda it is that the company is pushing. But yeah, calling for that sort of discipline, whether it meant a suspension, whether that meant termination, whatever it was, this is how these employees have felt. And you could say it just be easy just to go find somewhere else to work. Well, there's not always that option out there for them to be able to go and do that. Now, let me compare what was said here because you got to look, there's a bigger picture here. Take a look at the statement about these workers saying that Christians are no longer welcome at the park or 
for Disney itself working. The reason this is so important is because we're coming to a point where Christians will not be welcome in this world. Period. End of story. And I'm not talking about the woke Christian. I'm talking about the true Bible-believing, okay, followers of Christ. They will not be welcome in this world, in this new society that's coming. If you look at everything about the last days, the eventual rise of the Antichrist, the mark talked about in Revelation chapter 13, you're not going to be able to exist. Remember, Christians are not called to this world. We are not of the world. We are in the world, but we're not of it. To have to fight and scrape and claw for the approval of Disney is not something that we should be doing. Instead, what we should be doing is preparing people for the soon coming arrival of the Lord. I would even argue that for Christians, our job should not be to save America in terms of trying to get the country back on track. This country has already fallen. And some may disagree with, disagree with me on that. I don't think it's coming back. Now, if it does, that's up to God. Me personally, I don't feel that. I don't feel that that's what Christians should be focused on. I think it should be warning other believers about the times that we're in right now and preparing for the Messiah's arrival because where we're going when he comes, that's our true home. That's where we belong. This world is so evil. It is going to fall. You're seeing it. Each day, there's another example of how the wicked are taking over this world. And we have to understand that it's okay to let it go. It's okay to let go of this world to prepare for the new one that's about to come. We cannot get too wrapped up in it, get too attached. And I know that can be very easy to do. But there is something so much better, so much greater, that's waiting for us around the corner. And if we're too invested into this world and being part of it and fighting against things that we shouldn't even be concerning ourselves with, man, we're going to get wrapped up in that sort of thing and we're going to... We're going to miss out. You know, we're going to get too caught up in, in, in the, the political aspect of, of America and, and not focusing so much on Jesus, which is what we should be doing and leading other people, others to him who desperately need him right now. But so often you see that Americans are caught up in who's going to be serving as president, who's going to be serving as governor, who's going to be serving. And I'm not saying those things aren't important, but when you put all of your stock in that, and fighting these companies tooth and nail as if you're going to change them. You're not going to change them. Now, individuals is a different story. Witnessing to people about Christ and leading them. These companies, which you got to understand here, ladies and gentlemen, so many of them have already sold their soul. That's it. They ain't coming back. Okay. They've already said they've dug their heels in on their hill and they're not moving off that hill. They're sold out for the devil at this point. And it's what they've chosen. You got to let them go. So praying for Disney is not necessarily the route that we need to go. Or doing petitions or boycotts. They don't care. They don't care. We could talk about what's going on and we can lead people to Jesus by exposing darkness. And how that's what these companies are all about. The focus, though, should always be on Jesus. It should always be on Christ and his soon arrival. It is coming so much quicker than any of us think. If you need any other example, you just wake up every day and there's something else new that's happened. There's some new crisis, right, that's happening, that's going on. Some new warning about something terrible that's about to come or that's on the horizon for us. Count it all joy. 
count it all joy that it's just just yet another sign that we're just that much closer to the return of the Lord. Guys, if you're blessed by these videos that I do, the content here, talk about end time Bible prophecy headlines, and you're able to make a generous donation to help support, I greatly appreciate that. You can click the link to my PayPal, it's in the description, or you can sign up on my Patreon for just five bucks a month. When you do that, you'll be alerted for all the new content that I produce. That is because YT barely pushes notifications out for anything I do anymore. If you sign up on my Patreon, you're going to get notified of everything that I put out. Plus, you can comment there, completely censorship-free, semi-direct messages. Do not forget also, these videos will go out on my Rumble platform. So make sure you go give me a sub there. Plus, you never know when I could get kicked off of YT. So you might want to check me out there from time to time to see how that whole thing works. Uh, all the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, as always, we never want to leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that is you, if you're watching this video right now and you have yet to give your life to Christ, you've heard me talking here on this video and you've seen what's going on in the world and you've been on the fence maybe about accepting the Lord, well, I want to let you know today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to accept Christ. And I will lead you in this prayer. You can do this in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top is acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news here. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid that cost. What you have to do is repent of that sin. Repent means to turn from the sin. Not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again a child of God, you will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.